In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear men, and everybody else, how is your day unfolding? Yesterday, we started uh, a conversation. And then we said, men, let's have a conversation. And I did instruct, in humility, all our gracious ladies to make sure that this conversation reaches to their husbands, their boyfriends, their partners, to their sons, to all men. Take it even to your pastors, to your priests, to your bishops, to all your oracles, to your um, apostles, to your prophets. Take it to them. We must have a conversation. We cannot validate our lostness. We cannot validate our tepidity, spiritually and otherwise. We cannot validate our indifference. We cannot. But we need to do something. So, what does God do when he comes and he finds us dancing to the tunes, having forgotten our responsibilities? Because, believe me you, Men will forget. We will forget our responsibilities and we continue dancing to the tune. I remember in one of the graduations I, I was having, I have had many graduations in my various pursuit, pursuit of education. I remember the, there's, a, uh, the, there's a guest who came. The guest was a senior priest. And uh, because he was talking to us as um, priests so he told us that uh, I know that uh, you are ordained ministers you go out there and work for Christ I also know that there are some of you priests now he was addressing us some of you priests who have become gallivanters and he gave a philosophical definition of a garivanta. A garivanta is a man or a woman, but in that context he used a man, is a man who is found everywhere apart from where he is supposed to be. And that is when he talked of, of priests who behave like mobile churches. This fellow is always on the road, always. He will never be found in his rectory or in his parish, whatever it is that he is. Christians are complaining about the sacrament of reconciliation. Christians are complaining about uh, cancelling. They are complaining about his physical presence, you know. So he was saying that you can't just tell us that you are a priest and you are Christians never sees you. Then there is a problem there. So that means that even us, men of God, we can, um, we can run away from our responsibility. I wanted to use the word abdicate. We can abdicate our responsibility. And we continue dancing to the tunes. So, so as we talk about every man, that's why I'm saying that I, I talk to all men and I talk to them as a man. And I also address myself as a man. And that is why I said, dear men, let us have a conversation. God wants to have a conversation with us. Because largely, a good number of us may not be where he would want us to be. I'm not saying that men are lost. No. Neither am I saying that they are saints. I'm only saying that men, we need to have a conversation. Some of us are comfortable out there in the world, having abdicated our responsibilities, primary responsibilities, and we are dancing to the tunes who are adoring the idols that we have created. So, when God sees men misbehaving, biblically, what does he do? He jumps into the impossible situation. God never runs away from impossible situations. He never runs away from men who are misbehaving. 
That's how good he is. And that informs the wisdom that I have already shared with you. Never run away from a sinner, even irrespective of how this person has sunk into sin. You never know. You could be the voice of God sent to retrieve that soul from that pit. God will never shy away. Dear men, let us go for one another. Let's go there. When God jumps into the impossible situation, he calls men to decide if they are on the Lord, if they want to live to be on the Lord's side or not. When God enters into the impossible situation, where men are dancing to the tune, having abdicated their duties, when he comes, he comes as a loving father. And he comes and tells us, and that's what he's telling us today, my sons, are you on my side or not? So this conversation, largely, is to help us decide on whose side are we? Are we on the side of God or not? Because men who are on the side of God are known by their fruits. And we have said in the past, we cannot be on the side of God. Yet, we are never available to our primary responsibilities. I cannot say as a Catholic priest that I am on the side of God. And yet, I cannot obey my bishop. I'm never available for my, for my, for my responsibilities. I am perpetually late for mass. I don't do preparation for my homilies. Then there is a problem there. Neither would you say, you who is also a preacher on the other side, that you are a pastor who is on the side of God and you are never available for your wife. Those of you men who are married, you will never tell us that you are on the side of God and your wife never sees you. Your children never sees you. You never support anyone. The only person you support in this world is yourself. And number two, you support yourself. And number three, you support yourself. No. Today, today, Friday, the 25th day of um, February, God is asking us as his sons, my sons, which side do you choose? So, dear men, please answer me. Whose side do you choose? Because it is either we are on the side of God or not. There is no in the middle, being in the middle, no. It is either or. Either we are on the side of God or, Kabisa, we are not on the side of God. So, then after we have decided... Then God will ask us, if you are on my side, are you willing to follow me? Because God will never force us to follow him. I know some of us men are completely on the armpit of the evil one. We are doing our own black things. We are completely away from God. And we are on the side of um, spilling blood, advocating injustices and inhumane treatments. And we are doing all manners of evils. God is not going to force us to follow him. But he is asking us as his sons, my sons, are you willing to follow me? But you see, for us to, to be willing to follow him, we must make the primary decision, the fundamental option to belong to God. Once we make the fundamental option to belong to God, ipso facto, we will be able to follow him. And when we follow him, in chapter 33, the one that we have read, God actually shows men what he is expecting of them. In fact, this is our word as men. God is showing us a sneak peek of what he is expecting from us. Not children, not women, 
not troubled men, not troubled individuals, what he is expecting from us, the likes of Father C.K., Joshua, and the others. All men, we need to have this conversation. And we cannot run away. Neither can we demarcate. We say that maybe God is talking to those men, God is talking to lay men, lay men who are married and who are living a bad life. No. He is talking to us, as the devil can use also the men of the cloth. The devil can and has used priests to destroy his church. The devil can and has used pastors to destroy his church. The devil can and has used bishops to destroy his church. This is okay. We read across the world, men and women of the cloth, from all denominations, doing all manner of things. So we cannot wake up and say, you know, God wants the married men and the lay men to live like that because the rest of the men who are on the service of the Lord, they are good. No, we cannot lie to ourselves. We can't lie to ourselves. I know we have got thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of holy men of God. I know we have them. Bishops, priests, pastors, oracles, um, prophets, um, apostles, mention them. They are, they are there. And I can attest to this. We have got so, so, so many holy men of God. But we still have some other fellows who are not completely oriented to the holiness of God. And Till such a time that we admit that uh, we have a milestone to make. We have got thousands and thousands, if not millions, actually millions, of holy lay men, married men out there, but who are just so holy, who are just so good and so focused. At the same time, we have got others who may have subscribed to the evil ways of living. Again, we cannot run away from this. And I like a situation where we tell each other the truth. And that is why some of you don't like Father CK. Because I'll always tell you the truth. Even if you don't want to hear, let us hear it. John chapter 8 verse 32 tells us that we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Even when truth is as so painful as a wound, we speak about it. This is important for us men that we must stand and ask each other, where are we standing? How do we continue to count ourselves as men? We are in church, yet nothing is working. So, let's come together. Let us have a conversation. God is not tired with us. God will never be tired with us. Please do not listen to the voices that are dismissing you as a man. God has never dismissed any man in history, and he will never. Just the way you are, God wants to have a conversation with you. He is asking you, my son, on which side are you? If you are on my side, are you willing to follow me? So those of us who are willing to follow God, let us come together and have a conversation. We must help each other. We are so divided. There are, so, there are those men who have got the spiritual and the biblical enlightenment that they can take themselves to the healing point. But there are also other men who must be taken to the healing point, like the paralytic. Let us be those men who can carry others. Those who can carry ourselves, let's go there. Once there, dear men, let's come together. Let us have a conversation. God loves us. And God loves men. And he is always jumping into the impossible situation to tell men, my sons, I love you. My sons, I refuse to leave you in your lostness. That is why. That is why. That is why in Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son or the parable of the prodigal son, when the prodigal son came home, it is not reported in the Bible where he was coming from, how long he was lost, how much he had squandered, 
when God takes interest in us, history becomes irrelevant. I love that. God knows that I love that. Dear men, let's love ourselves. Let's come together. Let us have a conversation. God is not done with us. It doesn't matter how many men are actually lost. But I can tell you today, as your priest and as a man like you, God is not yet done with us. Please do not write yourself off. Do not allow anybody to write you off. Please don't. God will never, ever, 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 ever. Now, tomorrow, we continue with the conversation. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, keep well. I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., a man like you.